Welcome to Grant's Rock Warehouse, and tonight Stephen Schnee and The Wax are joining me. We are going to talk about the band Jellyfish, we're going to talk about their career. In fact, we talk about a couple of other bands too, so uh, hold tight, strap in, and enjoy. Talking bands no one talks about. Grant's Rock Warehouse. Welcome to Grant's Rock Warehouse, and tonight we are going to talk about the band Jellyfish. And I've got two gentlemen here that probably need no introduction, but we're going to introduce them anyway. I've got Stephen Schnee up here. We've seen him before. And we've got The Wax. The Wax is here tonight. The Wax has not been in the warehouse, but uh, he's here tonight. I actually have been hanging outside the warehouse, and the police were calling and ran away. So they had to bring him in, and we're just as shocked as you are. But anyway, we like... I felt sorry for him, so I unlocked the door and let him in. It's all about... it's. Damn Thanks shit. for the iced coffee, Grant. This place is very hospitable. It is. Well, we've got it all here in the warehouse. Just watch out for the heavy equipment. Don't get too close there to There are things. rats. It's infested with rats. There are rats here. So, but yeah, we're trying his to... name is The Waxed. Oh, boy. Here we go. But anyway, we're here. We're just going to talk about the band Jellyfish. I love the band. I've had a big history with the, the band. I got turned on back in the day when the first album came out. And I saw them on that first tour and I saw them on the spilt milk tour back in the day. And I probably told, I've talked about this, but the first time I saw them, they were playing at a place called the Newport in Columbus. There wasn't hardly anybody there. There must've been probably 25 people in the audience. And then the second time I saw them, they were playing on a flatbed truck at a place in Columbus called Ludlow's, which is just a bar pretty much. I've heard of Ludlow's. Okay. So, but they were just playing on this flatbed truck no one even paid attention were they, were they what was the purpose of the event it was they were just touring for spilt milk but I it mean, was low key it was, I was it a spilt milk they were... gig or were they part of like some kind of festival no Radio? they were playing ludlows and they put them out on a flatbed truck out in the parking lot and you know people really how, didn't pay that much attention how many people were there well, it's hard to tell because, you know, it was a bar and it was out in their parking lot. I don't know. I don't. My buddy and I went and we were big yeah. jellyfish fans and we were paying attention. I would say there was probably maybe 30 people paying attention to the, ba the band. Isn't Ludlow's, isn't that isn't like Almond Brothers or something or somebody have a. No, there's a Ludlow's in Cincinnati. Okay. And I think that's what that is. This is you just. You didn't say a jellyfish cover band. No, yeah. it was them. It was great. But well, no wonder they broke up. They could never get any momentum, you know? No, no. Well, the first time I saw them is they were uh, opening up for World Party. Oh. So I had, we had heard of Jellyfish, I guess, from uh, MTV because they were playing uh, The King is Half Undressed. That was mm -hmm. their big song from Belly Button, their first album. And... MTV was very, I think, good to them, as I recall. They were on shows, they were interviewed and stuff like that. I think, and Stephen can chime in with his knowledge of this. I don't think they were technically part of the Paisley Underground, but they were, but they were sort of mixed by default. People kind of because of their dress and their and because Jason Faulkner, who had been in a later version of the Three O'clock was in Jellyfish. I think so there wasn't was three o'clock like, like the main Paisley Underground band. Yes, but by by the time Jason Faulkner was in the band, uh, I think they were on um uh, they were sort of under the control of Prince. Because I right. remember I, I actually saw the three o'clock and I'll talk about that in a second, but finish so we went to see World Party. I, I'm from DC. As I recall they played I want to say they played more, more, um, at GW, George Washington University Smith Center, but I, I could be wrong. But there, it was a sizable place. It was at least a place that held 1,500 people. So it was filled. And Jellyfish opened. And they blew, our jaws hit the ground, they blew World Party away. It wasn't even like World Party didn't have a chance. Wow. Just, that's, how, that's how good. And you know what? The, the great thing... Grant, you could probably put links. Yeah. YouTube is littered with jellyfish stuff. You could spend days why because I think they were really popular in Germany and Japan. 
So there's a lot of live shows, full live shows on YouTube. So they blew World Party away. I mean, all World Party had was Ship of Fools, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. So, and they were just killer. I mean, it's pretty striking because um, Andy Sturmer, the lead singer, is the drummer, and he plays the drum standing up. So I had never seen that before. It was crazy. As I recall, the bass, this was the original incarnation. Well, they were a band before Jellyfish. Do we want to talk about that? And I don't mean to talk all over the place. Beatnik Beach. Beatnik Beach. There are a couple Beatnik Beach albums, but one, um, because I think Jason, not Jason, Roger and Andy were part of Beatnik Beach, but they were kind of on the first album in the background. Mm -hmm. On the second album, they came to the forefront, I believe. And that's the one to buy, get. If you can find it. Back in the day, yeah. that CD was rare as hen's teeth. And, you know, what? back in the day when CDs were selling big time, you know, I always go on the tangent. If you're going to buy CDs, now's the time because everything's cheap. But back yeah. in the day, in the 90s. You for the CD industry. I, I'm just telling you, that CD was expensive. Even and back you, in the day. And yeah. back in the, But now it's not. You can get it, I don't know, 15 bucks if you can find it. But it used to be like a $70 but there's CD. Not there's vinyl and I keep meaning to pick it up. So, so getting back to the, the show I saw and how striking. So the original incarnation was Roger Manning mm -hmm. keyboards and he played guitar. His brother was playing bass. Yep. And I want to say I, his brother might've been the main influence on their style of dress. And then it was Jason Faulkner on guitar. Yep. So four, four piece killer. And they were playing wing songs. They were playing Go Your Own Way by Fleetwood Mac. That's the cool thing. If you go watch these shows on YouTube, th they were spot on. They were impeccable. Uh, they, they're, the, the covers they did were incredible. And then, of course, their original songs are transcendent. So that was my first experience seeing Jellyfish. And I, it, it was in the, I think I was finishing up my college first degree and i turned my friends into them and then i saw them again in baltimore um i forget that it, i'm so old and forgetting things but was I, it the, spilt milk or was it still that first i think it was before spilt milk because mm -hmm. i don't think i saw them on spilt milk for i think i moved out to la and they they were touring and they broke up so i missed spilt milk but i saw them again in baltimore at the tail end of the belly button and someone stole Roger Manning's brother's hat and he had a hissy fit. Well, it's quite and, a hat for God's sake. Well, he had lots of hats, I guess, but he had a hissy fit, but they, but again, they were, le they were, they were not opening. Mm -hmm. They were the main attraction there. They were not on a flatbed truck. They were, this place had at least five, five over 500 people in it. Oh, nice. And so that's why it's puzzling to me. Like you don't spill milk. They would be on a flatbed truck. So well, no point. one in Ohio seemed to give a crap. I'm just surprised because so they even to this day do Ohioans give a crap? No, well, not really. I got in. Mm -hmm. I got into jellyfish. I was working for a distributor, uh, Abbey Road dis uh, distributor, who, who who are are no longer around. It's a music, you know. And I forget you're so much older than I am. Yeah, <laughs> um, and uh, I. I've always been a pop kid. I've always been the you know the guy into you know Beatles, Osmonds, Monkeys, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's the stuff I was always drawn to. So I was working there, and uh, I believe the first album came out on Charisma. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, correct. So, um, the who was Charisma, by the way. Yeah, and no, who? What was that label? Charisma. Uh, well, Charisma was actually. A, a, a British label that had been around in the seventies and they put out like charisma put out like the Monty Python albums originally. Mm. And, and charisma, I believe had been eaten up by Virgin. So Virgin decided to start the Virgin, uh, start a, a basically a, a relaunch charisma. And I don't remember the other artists, but I remember the first batch of artists or, or at least within the first year in comes the label rep. Uh, and as I said, I was working a distributor. So I got a promo of uh belly button. And initially I looked, I go, oh, these long hair, yeah, you know, whatever. I, I had no idea what to expect. Are they going to sound as bad as Psychofunkapus and, and, you know, some of these other bands I couldn't care less about? 
Uh, but I remember now, this isn't the CD, this is the omnivore one, but I remember that the booklet itself was like trifold. It act like, 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 uh, 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 like right here, you can mm -hmm. open it there and then open this. I don't know if, if that was on the commercial. I, I have it. I didn't pull it out. I but think I, that's the promo. Okay. Yeah, I have it in my um, CD case with all my original CDs. Okay. Or I took about the jewel case. So and I the original it. CDs, uh, colorful like the one that i think was yeah. you know what i want to say it was silk screened sure. with you different colors like, I mean, yeah if you can get yeah, it like, so, so, I, mean, so I, I, I remember i remember taking that home and not expecting anything out of it because there weren't a lot of bands that were making just pure pop music not nearly 90s pop not in the 90s it might know. be in here it might be in those but, you know a lot of people you know you know you uh, like like and then i had a promo single that came out a little bit at well, I'll get to that promo single, but it had. Does anyone? Did, have uh, I haven't seen one of those in years. They had "Let Him In," you know, the McCartney song, mm -hmm. and it and they did a medley that went right into "That Is Why." Yeah. So, in fact, the song "That Is Why" is the song that really caught me on that first album. I remember taking it home and just going, "Oh my god, what is this? This is amazing!" Because it was sophisticated. It was, you know, you could tell that these guys were fairly young musicians, and this was way beyond what they should have been capable of they created what i just this this sonic great pop record filled with you know i mean i i heard bits of queen and super tramp and wings and beatles and and emmett rhodes and, and paul mccartney solo and all this stuff just tossing around and there was nothing like that going on in 1990 uh -huh. when mm -hmm. that came out and i remember telling everyone at work and nobody cared i'm just going oh my god you guys have to hear this record well, CD, it was a CD. And, um, but nobody really paid attention. And it wasn't until, you know, outside of, of that environment that I started meeting people who were paying attention, you know, like the Dave Bashes and the John Borax of the world. Uh, you know, these are the people that were paying attention. Now, controversially, and I want to add this early, is I do not consider Jellyfish a power pop band. Although whenever I talk about power pop, you know, I've had people go, I'm surprised you didn't talk about jellyfish because I don't consider jellyfish a power pop band. Far what do you consider them? Um... I consider just a great pop band. They're much, far more sophisticated than, than power pop. They're bigger and bolder and more produced. And power pop doesn't have these, these flashes of queen and, and super tramp and wings and all the stuff I mentioned. Now it's power pop adjacent. Now, my you know everyone here you know we have three different opinions of what power pop is and usually the wax is wrong and uh but you know grant's opinion is a little bit different than mine mm -hmm. um but there is a sweet spot in there somewhere where where our our twins meet and um with jellyfish though i believe that they operate sort of outside of power pop and that's linked with anything, uh, you know, and, and their sound is linked to anything like classic rock or, or AOR, uh, top 40, just everything about this band was stupendous, whatever. And I know the power pop people think that they're, or say that they're power pop. I don't consider them remotely power pop. Power pop adjacent, yes. Just so, so many. Man, you're really trying to make that a thing. Power pop adjacent. I've been making that a thing for a long time. It may time. take off tonight. Yeah. Oh, probably not. Nobody listens to me. I, I'm listening to you. Not when Rob. I, I mean, when I heard them, I automatically kind of put like, I think more on the, the spilled milk, the queen influence came in on yeah. spilled milk. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But I felt Beatles ish, their blended harmonies and stuff. I thought, I thought more Beatles, like later Beatles, that's yeah. what seemed to be their main influence to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like Abbey Road try and, type. People try and crowbar them into ELO territory, which I guess is Beatles influence well, band. They're in yeah. that realm. They're, but, you know. But they, they, again, like they were playing Paul McCartney Wing songs and, and Fleetwood Mac songs. Mm -hmm. But um, very pro over, no, I wouldn't say overproduced because I kind of think overproduced no. is a negative term. I think it's big, bold, and brash production. It's just, it's just spectacular. It's, it's shimmery and, 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 and uh, so much. 
ear uh, candy. Could we use that uh, reference? Delicious. But isn't all music ear candy? Well, I mean, well, well I don't think Dave 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 like. is ear candy. But think about the production of like spilt milk. There's so many different instrumentation. There's a lot going on. I I think spilt milk would classify as ear candy because there's a it's a it's a lot for if it's a headphone experience almost you know can I can I uh, can I say that oh that's the uh, two CD version that I need I've never that's heard the, I never seen Rob hold a CD in my life if I were to show you the amount I mean I have that book I have two of these books so the jellyfish is probably somewhere over there mm -hmm. and I don't want to get off camera no you're good I you was just shuffling. I have a, a a high shelf, probably with 500 CDs in it. So in your face that I don't listen, and I'm made fun of. I have, I found I have an Oppo player hooked up to my TV that plays everything, and I have a CD player set up to my system. Mm -hmm. So I have Oppo player hooked up. To Oppo your... Oppo is a. Remember Oppo? Those are those. Those oh, yeah. are. High end, yeah I, he, he, yeah. I thought he said oboe player. There's just some guy sitting in the corner yeah. hooked up. Hey, John, have that to too. Yeah, go, go ahead, play me out. <laughs> <laughs> but there's oboe no, players, no, no, GPO. it's an it's a if they were a high end, they made high end Blu ray DVD players. But the thing about them, they're region free and they play everything, mm -hmm. they play every kind of digital format there is. And up until like people say the best CD player you can get or DVD is one of the uh, game consoles because the firmware is constantly being updated, like sometimes daily mm -hmm. that they always updated the firmware to, to, so you could play. And I found it at a thrift store, 20 bucks, and they're still worth money. Oh, even you could turn that up, over. Even though they're not updating the, the firmware on it, but um, we de digress from what we're talking about. But that's a good way to play a lot of different things. So here's spilled milk, the omnivore version. I my original is in, button, the omnivore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I these have are those. So I these are worth money now because uh, I Schnee, did you say yeah. there was a UK company putting these out or no? There is a company in a company called uh, Music on C D. They also have an arm called Music on Vinyl. Uh, mm -hmm. They were originally music on CD, and they reissue. Uh, oh, so music so, on vinyl? You mean the British company that's Sony kind of partly owns or something? Possibly, but part of it is music on CD. Same company, but you know, different branch. And they put out, um, but I thought they were based in Holland. Uh, and they put out. Um, yeah, they have their own pressing plant, so they press their own vinyl. Yeah, they they put out uh, spilt milk, but they did not put this out and of course spilt milk i think is already deleted like mm -hmm. even the reissue is already deleted so i can't even find it well i do have this i mean paid a pretty technically, penny for it, technically i have see this is sealed i do have copies that i'm i can't speak to exactly what i'm doing with them but that's what i have so <laughs> he's these got are, extras about it. these are the omnivore ones here's the hype sticker why all of a sudden I can't hold a CD and show it? No, you're well. You're used to holding records all the time. Yeah. So, and here's the. Let me just show you. Actually, can I just go through and show you everything? I Please, have? I. Hey, that's what we're so, here about. So right now, in because I wasn't feeling well today, in my haste of trying to find, there's two things I don't have. I mean, I have them. So here's an interesting one. This is called stack, stack of... tracks. This is all the music without the vocals, they rip the vocals off. So that's that's something they put out. It's a two CD set. And they also have um, these belly button demos, which I think are on the uh, Omnivore version of belly button, which is here, which is two CDs, yeah. one just fell out. Oh, you know what just fell out? The original belly button CD. Uh, yeah. uh, there it is. There it is. All right. Yeah, so the probably, promo version of that has wait. smoke screening on it. Hey, yeah, you can see you guys. But that's that's actually probably where my spilt milk is. It's probably up there with my copy of spilt milk. This is just an extra. But um, actually, so here the Omnivore just put on their own branded mm -hmm. ones, mm -hmm. and there is a book, a nice booklet. I was too stupid 
to get the the vine the vinyl because I really wasn't collecting. <laughs> although I was friends with one of the owners of the company, or I am friends. But um, this is a nice booklet. And this, when they reissued this, I had, what's the name of the company, Stephen, do you know off the top of your head who put out in the 90s? This is how popular Jellyfish was. They put out two albums. They continued to have fans. And in the late 90s, I forget the name of the company, they put out a box. Oh, the with, box set. Not, not Lane. Lane. So not I, Lane. Listen, I am a Jellyfish fan. But that thing was going for over 200 bucks and I sold it because my friend gave me, I had more stuff than came in that box. So on these omnivores, there's just so much crap. You got the album, you got live stuff, and you have all the demos. That's why these omnivores are worth money because mm -hmm. they're out of print. They lost the license. It has all this stuff, more stuff that was in this box set from the 90s. And then Belly Button, their version of Belly Button, that's good. has all the same kind of shit in it. Yeah. It's not shit. It's good stuff. So okay. it, you're saying that those reissues have more than what's even on the fan club box set. I think what he's saying is all the stuff that Omnivore has put out combined has more than what's on that box. Not, set. Uh, not lame. Jellyfish. Came out in 2002. Yeah, everybody, yeah. let's let's spend the next hour uh, looking at it. So this is the stuff. box. That's the cover of the box, joining yes. a fan club. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, this is going for 230 bucks on eBay. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Brodeen from Not Lame put that together. And, oh, yeah. It, and it, but Omnivore kicked their ass. So let me go over all the other stuff Omnivore put out. Uh, don't you sure. talk about Bruce Brodeen like that. Listen, Bruce Brodeen, name the place and the time. So then they put out this radio jellyfish. I've never seen that. From 1993 of radio uh performances they did mm -hmm. in fact you this will never ever come out again for it was explained to me for legal reasons they can never put no one can ever put this out so this someone's going to prove me wrong it goes for more than it originally costs so, <laughs> sure it does okay then they put out <laughs> like I showed you then i have this live at bogart's which is a whole live CD from 1991. Is that the Bogarts in Long Beach? Or is that Bogarts in Cincinnati? And it, here's the funny thing. There are a couple versions of this. So when people ask, they want this one with the goldfish on here. Okay. He's not answering us because he doesn't know. Listen. It's probably I, Long Beach. It's probably not Cincinnati. Do you want me to tell you where it is? Sure. I thought it was at Humphrey Bogart's grave. How, how do you get these out, Schnee? You're used to handling these things. Ah, do you you don't know anything about I you have big hands. No, you're just an idiot. Yeah, uh, Radio Jellyfish, at least the CD of it's going for 50 bucks on Discogs. Yeah. So th this one, actually, my local record store has the vinyl of it, and I should go buy it. Um, This, blah, 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 blah. Here's some nice pictures of that. Uh, this is very cool. This is of the original incarnation. Chris Manning, Roger Manning, Jason, and Andy. So Bogarts. I mean, while he's looking, Jellyfish, an amazingly, uh, th their songs were so complex, so melodic. I, 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 don't, I, I don't think radio was ready to, to uh go from you know the, the schlock they were playing in 1990 and 1993 when those albums came out i think it was i think people were just not ready for something that sophisticated uh i mean it it's not music that that made you think you know it's not like you had to be a smart person to listen to it but you know there's so many peaks and valleys in the songs and are you saying i'm dumb mm. now <laughs> now here's so when I started getting into back into collecting vinyl, yeah, Omnivore found a box of jellyfish spilt milk. So they did theirs on color vinyl, but they did but it did it with their own label. And it they didn't have covers. And they were selling these for eleven dollars. So I I got this without the cover. Oh, nice. Um, but la this last year, at the end of last year, Stupid Universal decided smartly to issue these but stupidly on analog 
So they're not the greatest sounding versions of the albums. But now, as Grant is an exclusive to your channel. Yes, sir. Frankenstein. The, the, Frankenstein the, the Omnivore insert is included. Oh. As as an uh, and this and this is for Schnee. I defaced a bra a forbidden Broadway album and wrote Jellyfish Spill Milk on it. Oh, as, how lucky. Look as an you, exclusive. Steven. I am going to take this and this and put it where it belongs with this. He Frankensteined okay? it. He Frankensteined, he Frankensteined, I'm Frankensteined it. it. This is the exclusive Frankensteining on your live, live on uh, 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 Grant's uh, wow. anyone ever Frankenstein an album on a warehouse. But the oh, real crazy. question is, how does that sound? You said it's so, all from analog, right? It's so the scuttle. One of the, if you want to become a jellyfish fan, and you are uh, on Facebook, there is a great Facebook group, very loyal. In fact, when this um came out without the covers some dude made a cover and made a bunch of them and, and sold them to members of the group he and they he did a kick-ass job so it's a great group full of information they're always posting stuff about all the members who ever been in jellyfish we haven't even talked about when they put out spilled milk which is mainly just roger and andy doing mm -hmm. with albie galutin was the producer on both albums yeah he worked on saturday he's famous for working on saturday night uh fever soundtrack Mm -hmm. Um, um, where was I? So, uh, but uh, Eric know, Dover, who, the two people who took over when they toured Spill Milk was Eric Dover and Chris Smith, Jim Smith, Jim, Jim. what? Jim that was Tim Smith. Tim, Tim Smith, Tim, Tim Smith, Smith, who was in a bunch of other big bands. But out of that, who went up? Who ended up being in Imperial Drag? Was it? Eric, uh, just Roger Manning and Eric Dover, and I okay. forget the other two members. I do have the CD of Imperial Drag. Yeah. Disappointment if you were expecting Jellyfish. It's horrible. not anything like it. Yeah, not horrible. Not horrible. But no. actually, and actually recently in the, over the pandemic, Tim Smith, Eric Dover, and Roger Manning got together and created a band called the Licorice, the Licorice Quartet. Or something? Quartet. Yeah. And they put out three or four EPs. And that's very jellyfish esque music, right? And Roger Manning, I mean Andy Sturmer, the lead singer guy. Yeah, uh, I don't think wants any part of the spotlight. Doesn't want to get back together. I don't know. They've never really talked about their why they broke up and their disagreement. But he's made a career of scoring animated TV mm -hmm. and and producing people in Japan. He was a big part of Puffy, or known as Puffy Amayumi here in the U.S. Yeah, I did. love the stuff he did with that. Right, and and in fact, you can go on the internet, and there's about 10 demos of Andy Sturmer stuff that's quite good. I don't know how they got out, but you can go on the internet and download them. They're really good. You, could, you see the potential of maybe if he got back together with Roger doing those songs being Jellyfish songs. Mm -hmm. But uh, I highly recommend searching the internet andy Sturmer demos or whatever they're called they're really good have you and, heard the leo cd rob so Elio, i do know this and i have it i have the downloads so that's the project who another good maybe you could do another video on blue do you oh, guys yeah, have blue i love stuff? blue yeah. i don't know steve you have any blue stuff uh not that much but uh uh but uh, Blue, so Blue put yeah, out about four right? albums. Like Redhead or something? Yeah. Redhead, he actually put out Redhead on vinyl, which I didn't buy, and I, I need to go see if it's still available. Mm -hmm. He um, is kick-ass. He's very Jellyfish-esque in his writing, and he sounds very much like uh, Jeff Lynne from Yellow. I think that's a big influence on him. Yeah, I'd so, say that's fair, so, yeah. So Blue did some uh collaborations and kind of um what would you call them homage albums mm -hmm. so they did uh elio loud was, lion love line was an homage to def leopard yeah i've got that too it, yeah i swear to god it's brilliant yeah. i mean it, no, all, it sounds like def leopard i swear to god you would never anyone think. anyone watching this wants to discover something that will give them a boner for the rest of 2024. 
Well, and a lady boner. I'm not a gonna... lady. We boners for everyone. Uh, get red around boners. Go go get the CD which I have of Redhead, mm -hmm. and your mind will be blown to how good. There's not one dud song on that album. No. Nope. And I have a I have a signed LP of From Blue. I have most of his CDs that he independently has put out. But he makes a lot of his money writing songs for other people and writing songs for... He used to write songs for Disney Channel uh, guys when they put out their albums. Uh -huh. So, And I think he lives in Santa Monica. He might have moved. But it, I think he's originally from Boston, but Boston. if anybody think, knows the first no. Spider-Man movie, he well, the song Somebody Else was featured in Spider-Man. Yeah. And it's also, great. Also, the, uh, the Wilkerson album by Danny Wilkerson was produced by blue sounds very much in that vein it so, sounds uh, just like you, blue production uh, wise so that album. okay so blue is from blacksburg virginia okay the reason i know blacksburg virginia is my siblings all went to virginia tech a polytechnic university in blacksburg virginia i've been there like a billion times it's a great college town and he he got into the music school in boston what is it berkeley Berkeley. Berkeley. Music. So he went. He went to Berkeley, and became in. Got into his own. Performed live in and around Boston, and then he moved to L.A. And but blue is awesome. So he, I think he did four. So he put. There's one album. Is he on that album that the Handsome Brothers did with Bunny Carlos? Uh, is he uh, that? Oh tinted shoot! Windows? What's that called? Tinted Windows? Yeah, maybe. I know. I know. The Hanson brothers were part There's of one Hanson under... brother, Adam Schlesinger, uh, James. What, Eha, what just happened? Oh, Bob if Trump. I do that, balloons will come up. Um, I, it doesn't work for me. No, you got to have a Mac. I have a Mac. I have a Mac too. Oh well, it I works think for maybe, me. Is your Mac the newest Mac? It's a new iMac. Yeah, I, mine is two years old, so I don't think it has. But I was going to say, there's two versions of the Redhead CD. One that came out on Aware, and then it was reissued on Epic. And they changed the, uh, look, there it goes again. They changed the track lineup. So some tracks were removed off the first record. So you need to get two, look at it going crazy. Well, let you, me see if I can pull up the the red, the red. There's bouncing off the satellites. This has turned into a blue video from Jellyfish. Well, we're just talking music. It's all right. People like it. I'm telling you, if you like Jellyfish, people should discover blue. So let me see if blue... But it's B-L-E-U. He if spells it. B-L-E-U, yeah. yeah. If anybody's typing it in right now to go to Discogs or Amazon or uh, eBay or whatever. There's a oops. track on the first record that's got Puffy Yami Yumi on it that's not Puffy on Yami the Yumi. second. Dude, it's just... not on the second one. Uh, Yeah, that's the... That's, that's the, the cover of Reddit. Of, 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 yeah. That's the second cover. What's the Puffy song? Oh. Crowd, I'm looking, but Andy Sturmer's all over this record. He's on Could Be Worse. Um, what song is Puffy on? Bob, the vinyl's still available. I'm just surprised that Andy hasn't. I mean, Andy is considered an absolute legend by the people that fought the people that are you know really into music, and the fact that I mean, I guess maybe the whole major label thing and him being out uh being a part of this this quote unquote machine was a little bit much so he just sort of prefers to stay in the background so if know. you go to his website bluetopia is the name of this website um well the vinyl's still available for blue he reissued it last year so i think i'm going to get off my ass and order a copy of it but all those records the leo a watch pot four those yeah. are all great i've I, heard some of to hell with you but i'd have to listen to that again i have all of them because what here's how he did it he did he had enough of a following where it funded uh, by his fans it wasn't he didn't do like a gofundme or a kickstarter he Put it up there for you to pre-order and that's how he did it he had enough of a following mm. yeah i don't have everything but i've got everything i've got everything up to four well i think i'm gonna order the vinyl of redhead 
Digger Digger's factory has it. And it's 30 bucks. Oh, I see. It came out in 2023. I'll be damned. Red opaque vinyl too. Yeah, he has a did you when you order you get a digital bonus track called Loveless, which I think he added for it. Okay. He doesn't have a shop. I mean to order all his stuff. I think he did this. He you, you could order CDs from him and all that stuff. Can't find it on uh I was seeing if Loveless was on the first version of Redhead, but it's not. And I, I can't tell you what was re removed. I'd have to look at them side by well, if side. You go, if you go back to Bluetopia, well, he has a band camp. He has a band camp, okay. So he calls a record club, Blues Record Club. Mm -hmm. And all his shit's on there. It's all digital. Ah, uh, screw that. Redhead Record Club. I wouldn't buy if it's just digital. No. And there's a cut. No, he yeah, has a compact disc. Does. There's a compact disc. All right. And there's 13 songs on it. Isn't that amazing? We're we're doing a uh, um... jellyfish <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah, jellyfish thing, and uh, uh, we're <laughs> we're all on the internet searching for blue product. <laughs> Well, that's because we go on tangents on this channel, and this is indeed, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Uh, here's another one of those uh, homage ones, the major labels. Do you have that one? Uh, came out only in Japan. Major labels? Yeah. So in this one, it's an homage, Paul McCartney, Nielsen, XTC, 10CC. Um, it's him, Mike Viola. Yep. Who's Mike Viola? Um, he, Candy Butchers. Candy Butchers. And Ducky Ducky Carlisle. The late and Ducky's Ducky Carlisle stuff passed and... away. Ducky passed away? Yep. 2023. Probably just a few months ago. I had no idea, but he's the one that was pretty much collaborating with Blue on all of his product, yep. uh, on all of his projects. Yep. Oh my God, I had no idea. Ducky, an amazing talent. He worked with uh Sal uh from the Stompers on a, a, a on one of the Amplifier Head albums. And how uh this is all related, but what about the Merrymakers? Wax, um, do you know uh, Sweden? that? Mm -hmm. Sweden? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. produced by Andy Sturmer, and yeah, Andy Ryan. plays on a lot of it. It's a fab. Now that is power pop. Well, there's a couple. There's a couple of Merrymakers albums, like. Uh, I think uh, I think Omnivore did a Merrymakers reissue. I they, believe they did. There's I have it. I have, I have the CD of then, it, and then the first one. The one that I'm talking about is Bubblegum that came out in 97. Yeah. Um, there's two versions. Well, there's... there. God, what Grant. There, the original one that came out in Japan has the original mix of it. And they remixed it on Big Deal. And they yeah. put it out as a two-CD set. Yeah. Now, the original... The like I said, the original the Japanese one is the original mix. Oh, they're, so they're a Swedish-based duo. It's yeah. It's fabulous. It is power pop to the T. I'll tell you the whole Swedish scene, right when Jellyfish was coming out. I have to bring Jellyfish, you know, back into this. Right. Keep us on track. When, when, when Jellyfish was um uh, uh putting their albums out, the Swedish scene, which totally unrelated, but a lot of the bands were very much like that. Uh, uh or or just great pop bands. They may not have sounded like Jellyfish, but let's say the Merrymakers, Beagle uh you know even eggstone this perfect day these people putting out these great pop records the same time jellyfish was doing it in the u.s it was more accepted i think uh, uh or 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 in sweden than it was in the u.s uh because it yeah. seemed like there was a lot of great bands from sweden coming out in the early 90s that didn't get released here uh or only had the occasional release because uh, uh i'm trying to remember it was mary makers didn't they have a song called andrew store which is mm -hmm. just uh, can I can I show something before I forget to show it? Sure. So this is how big sure, jellyfish. This is how big jellyfish is. Last year, at the beginning of last year, I think Newland, which is like a new British reissue label, put out a lot of good vinyl jazz stuff. But they put this uh, seven inch box out of jellyfish. I have never seen that. It uh, right now you could probably get it. It came out as a hundred bucks, maybe a hundred twenty. Right now, I think you can probably get it for 70 bucks. It is seven multicolored. They came out with a multicolored version and a black vinyl version because uh, 
um black vinyl sold out or one of the other ones sold out so much they put out another mm -hmm. there's uh, this particular one's the multicolored there's seven seven inches with their original sleeves they did put out singles back in the day it's a 64 page booklet 3d poster with glasses the, this was limited to a thousand i think each the black vinyl and then the color world a thousand so here are the 3d glasses Grant, can you get the balloon thing again? I can. <laughs> now it will work. Whoa. Whoa, look yeah. at that. That's incredible. Whoa. Look, okay. So it came with the 3D glasses. <laughs> so here's what you get in this. You get, when was that released? How long ago? Last year. Last it's year, terrible. okay. You get this 3D poster to, with the glasses. But it's vinyl, so it, so it uh, smells like vomit. Mm. Yeah, but everything smells like vomit to you. And then the booklet here. Very nice job. Oh, nice. It's a really nice booklet. Okay. Then singles. New Mistake is on one side. And he's my best friend on the other. And here's the color vinyl. And I've listened to these. These sound, they blow away these universal reissues that just came out. Really? Um. Oh, yeah. Because you know what? These are probably digital. So we'll get, I'll get back after I show this. I'll get back to But the others are analog. I th wait a minute. Okay. Uh, I'll go get ahead. back to the persnickety. I'll get back to the. We all know Mazzy. Mazzy did a good video about talking about how he does not like these reissues, but I'll, I'll get back to talking. Let me just show the rest of these. Okay. Then. What does Mazzy baby, always have to come up? Baby's coming back. By the way, their video, new mistake. There's a video of it. They did a mm -hmm. video. Baby's coming back. There's a video, and it, I actually went in a record store, and they had originals of these. They weren't in the best shape, and I go, "Well, I have this box." Mm -hmm. so, so, and then every um, all I want is everything. Is a good song. Yeah. On the B side, you got the Ghost of Number One, which I think was the second single off of Billy Button, and All Is Forgiven. Oh, I didn't show the colored vinyl. Of Baby's coming. Oh, that's okay. Out. Well, no, it isn't. I know you're used to making mistakes, Nate, but not me. I'm a perfectionist. Yellow. Oh, very nice. Yeah. It, John Vinyl just doesn't do anything for Steve. It just kind of bores him. He's getting an no. inward boner. No, it, 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 it's not that. It's just that now we've just become Hello? any other video out there. Boring and dull. Uh, hold on. No, there's impossible that we're boring hold, and dull. Hold on. There's a version of a Stanler and Young song. Oh, really? Is it colored? <laughs> I've this never seen about, that either. No matter oh, what. Gosh. And th uh, think about your troubles, which I don't think is on any album. Wow. And I'm going to tell you. So I'll show you. I think it's in here. This one song. Okay. Okay. Calm down. There's the color bottom. It's beautiful. Okay. Right. I'll tell you, uh, there is one song that is interesting. They, this is their big single from Belly Button, The King is Half yeah. Undressed. Mm -hmm. And what's the piece out of that? I'm trying to find the one that has. Well, um, actually, this is an, e this is an EP because uh -huh. there's two songs on King is Half Undressed and Calling Sarah. Okay. This is on the second side. It's not an EP. It's pretty fun. But I have a 12 inch of this somewhere. That I bought from Europe, and they called it mint minus, and it was all scratched up. Them European people. Damn Europeans can't judge shit. Hey, if you ever saw the John Hughes movie with um, career opportunities with Jennifer Connelly as yeah. a very gorgeous. Oh, I know Jennifer Connelly. Right, and Frank Wiley, who's the mm -hmm. town liar. This song's in the movie. I want to stay home, and this has uh, the live version of Jet. Oh yeah, which is know. classic. Great. Their version. version of Jet is awesome, and this it's is awesome. awesome white vinyl. And then the last one is this has this is the EP one. So this has now she's uh, now she knows she's gone. Bed spring kiss, and on the uh, side two is. Uh, she is live versions of She Still Loves Him and Baby's Coming Back. I have a CD single somewhere because back in the early 90s, uh, Nintendo had the brilliant idea 
to get hop bands at the time to record songs about Nintendo video games. And a genius song that they did that you could only get as the CD single. Is, is it on here? What's it, it called? Be... Um, What's the track? I, th I think it's on this one. Sorry. No, that's all right. I'm old and feeble-minded. No, I think it's just amazing that there's so you much it, for such a limited lifespan that Jellyfish had, they how much a there's a lot of material that's come out. So I forget. I'll look it up. It's not on any of these, but it is a genius song about Super Mario. It is so good. Um, I don't think you would get flagged for playing it, but... Um, I doubt it. I probably would never even pop up. Jellyfish Nintendo song. Okay. Right. Ignorance is Bliss is the name of the song. It is genius. Ignorance I mean, I can pull bliss. it up if you want me to play it. Let me put the link oh. in the comments below. So that that came out way after Spilt Milk. Mm -hmm. It sort of kind of, to me, was a glimmer. Oh, they're going to put out another album, but then they broke up. So is that what I mean? But how it, it, far? It, how much after did that come out? As opposed to when spilled milk was released, so they were still together. But then they, I don't, I know, don't know. I don't. I don't know how that Nintendo thing was put together. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about it. I didn't investigate it. But it came out pretty much at way after, as I recall, from spilled milk. Huh. I'll be damned. Well, if anybody knows more about that in the comments. I mean, sure, I could look up and say how. Well, I know. Eh, I'll let someone else look it up for God's sakes. They can let us know. It's fine. It's pretty great. But what's this? Well, you know what? It says it was released in 91. So I guess it was before Spilt Milk. So I'm wrong. Well, I'm right. wrong. Usual. Hmm. Dude, this is 30 years ago. Tell me what you ate for breakfast 30 years ago, Schnee. Uh, Probably donut gems and a glass of milk. There you go. Donut gems. I'm not sure what the donut gems are. I, I, I mean, you know, the little mini donuts, you know, you get a package the, of six of them. The like the little uh, sugar. Uh, yeah, there's either powder like, donuts. Yeah, there's either powder donuts or there's the chocolate wax ones uh, or the, or the ones that, that have like skin flakes all over them. So wax, what's the. OK, so we've got these new records that just were released in November, the yeah. reissues of the first two Jellyfish albums. Yeah. What's the, the general consensus of that is that those they're from their analog source, but they don't sound as good. All right. What's so the deal here, with that. Here's what I do know. So. I'm a vinyl guy. These two are CD guys. So there's a guy, uh, Michael. I got Fremer, a lot of vinyl. Who, there's a Michael Fremer who tracking angles, his website, mm -hmm. he went uh, apparently Universal has a vault somewhere in Pennsylvania built underground where they store all their tapes or a lot of them. He went to visit there and shooting with his camera, went into a room where a lady, I guess, was QCing and it said jellyfish. And he goes, oh, it's jellyfish. So that was sort of like, oh, I don't know how far in advance he made this video, but within months of the video, um, uh universal who owns the rights to these mm -hmm. announced these were limited i don't even think you could have got these from record stores uh there are two websites that universal owns you discover and the sound of music you could only order them from them and on the hype sticker it says 30th anniversary edition cut from the original analog master tapes 180 grams Someone sent me an article from the Steve Hoffman forums where the guy who was hired, um, what do you call it? He's not an employee of Universal. He was hired to master the high-res files for digital. Okay. And he had gotten the tapes and said, he reported to whoever he reported to at Universal and said, these analog tapes don't sound great. You know, you should be doing these digital. And I guess because we live in the time we live in where people collect vinyl on everything analog, some executive or whoever was in charge thought that'd be a good angle on these, which were wrong. These are not horrible. 
but you have to crank up your stereo to just hear them. There's no nuance. They're very, um, they're not punchy. The the Omnivore and the Newland, which are probably almost digital, sound a lot better than this. So basically what they did was a flat transfer off the master tapes to vinyl. Right. And even someone who was creating the digital versions for their other type of distribution pointed it out to them pre-release. So it's great to have these albums out on vinyl. It's great to have the covers, but the listening experience is better digitally or through other ways, which is a shame because although yeah. Belly Button is a, is a kick-ass album, this album is a masterpiece. I call this oh, yeah. album a masterpiece. It truly is a masterpiece. Yeah. And you can yell at Grant, not me. It is on par with Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Man as a as a tech as as an as a creative expression of, of two geniuses, and I'll call them geniuses, who tried who threw everything against the wall and it stuck perfectly there. Th there's so much. Uh, I, I would have to say this is my li most listened to album ever. So many layers to it. There's many layers to it, but this is the album I've listened to the most out of any uh, ever, ever Did in the history of my times? life. Wow. Holy shit. Four and a half. I was cut short because I got a phone call. No. And I'm going to tell you my experience. This is a good story. Okay, go ahead. Oh, so I was a huge Jellyfish fan from Belly Button. <laughs> in 1990... He's like a big Jellyfish fanboy, Steve. Yeah. In 1992, mm -hmm. I was considering... I was finishing the second degree in screenwriting from the University of Maryland. Mm -hmm. And I, I was considering moving to Los Angeles. I said, I'll go out for a couple of weeks and see if I'm meant to be out there. A, a friend from high school went to moved out here to go to UCLA and stayed out here. And my cousin was going to UCLA too. So I initially stayed with him in his dorm. And then my buddy said, come stay with me. I live in West LA. So I stayed with him for a week and a half. And I'd heard the, the second Jellyfish album would come out. Mm -hmm. And he lived within walking distance, Schnee of the warehouse. So I walked to the warehouse in, at the border of West LA and Santa Monica, and I bought a uh, jellyfish and I had a CD man. And as I was walking, I just walked around West Los Angeles in a daze listening to this album for the first time. So I was walk. so I distinctly remember being in LA on a beautiful day walking around with and just nonstop listening to the CD of it. I have that original CD in one of the book things. So it, it was a profound, profoundly a great experience. But I put this album on I par with like, like that. Yeah, I put this album on par and I had a Carl's Jr., which I go with. What a weird name for a fast food chain. What's the how's the junior work? So <laughs> And it was, it, and I go, is Carl's Jr. is like Burger King because they char their burger. So, King Jr. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I, I have, and again, joining a fan club mm -hmm. is such an ode to Queen. The first, the first, the first song is sort of an intro. So, joining a fan club is the second song on the album. I dare anyone to listen to Spilled Milk and not tell me that it's a masterpiece. You know, I, I truly, that's one thing I don't force upon people is my love for jellyfish. I kind of feel like it doesn't come off sincere or people will take it seriously because no, it's not sincere. my image in the VC or on YouTube is about being a jazz fan. But if I, Schnee and I, Schnee and me have conversations. So he knows. And here's another thing. People act like I'm five and just all I discovered music is jazz. And that's all I have there capacity to talk about well, what they, i they, they think that because that's the truth <laughs> but i've been on this there's earth, much more to him than just jazz i've no, been on not. this earth for a huge i'm almost done and i 
<laughs> I'll beat <laughs> you to the end, buddy. And uh, and if I showed you all the CDs I have, it's it, you would go, wow, he knows that shit. And if you see me on the streams I'm on, things will come out of my mouth that I'm amazed I remember and know. But I, I, I could seminal albums. I would have to say there are five to ten seminal albums in the history of recorded music, or at least the rock era, rock and pop. The Osmond's era. Crazy Horses. No, if I if off the top of my head, I had to say Pet Sounds, Sgt. Yes. Pepper. Yes, they're, they're producing marvels. Don't get me wrong; I'm talking about producing marvels in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, Dion, albums that were over. Love. Huh? Celine Dion. Celine Dion, The Color of My Love. That's number three. There's a Jose Feliciano record, I think. <laughs> no, but I'm talking about overproduced albums that are really not overproduced. Right. There's a show right there, overproduced albums that aren't really overproduced. Well, if you if you listen to Spilled Milk, there's a song where they hit an anvil. When you use an anvil in a song, it's You're copying Abbey Road, damn it. Bang, no. bang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... so and I could probably come up with, like, there's probably an ELO album that is a mar Marvel, though. Maybe it's um, El Dorado or something. Probably El Dorado. Yeah. So albums, albums that are overproduced, oh, the but th it's not in a bad way. Spill, right, right. And, and again, I hold Spilled Milk is maybe my favorite album ever. It's definitely the album I listen to the most. Mm -hmm. so, well, well it's that, perfect. It, it's a perfect record. It it's is not overproduced. It they concocted it. it. It sounds the way they wanted it to sound, and everything fits in perfectly. But, There's but not that think, many. Go ahead. But do you think if you talk to them, it, they wouldn't be? They're not satisfied with the final product because they're. That's that's another thing. That's a characteristic well, of how good the album is. They could nitpick over things they would do differently, as the creative uh, people who made it. But it is genius. And I, yeah, I, don't I agree. Know, I don't know technically how many tracks and overdubbing and all that. But if you want an example of that, that's this album. So you actually like that album more than Grant Green live at Ludlow's? <laughs> Was Ludlow's the whorehouse she used to visit as a teenage boy? No, Ludlow's is the place that they just have a, a truck bed out back. Yeah. And play. It could be Grant Green could have played there. I don't know. Yeah. You know, well, there's it, certain things you could look at with Jellyfish because what they're doing, they're not reinventing anything. They're not inventing anything. They're, totally they're building on what's already been placed. Yeah. Have they, you not had Pepper? You hadn't had Pet Sounds. You hadn't had. Uh, what? What is there a '70s album that is like that? I'm trying to think of a '70s overproduced good in a good way album well the 70s that year the they really didn't the produce opera. anything like that yeah a queen album By yeah. queen that would be a perfect example yeah here's the 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 event queen who basically if freddie mercury was still alive they'd still be playing and even till i like queen till the end because mm. like i one of my favorite movies ever is highlander that sounds like it's all Queen. Yeah. And all the songs even, are kind of magic. Even when Freddie Mercury was dying, that album they made then was Innuendo. Innuendo is a good album. So they they overproduced till the end, you know? Mm -hmm. In fact, um, Omnivore has released all the uh, Roger Taylor solo albums too. I want to get those. I do. I've got the, I've got two of them, the first I two. I want to get the box set, but just kidding. I'll, I'll, we'll get you those. So, but, but I mean, I, I could speak more passionately about it, but it's my favorite album. And that's great. I yeah. love it. I love it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But there are well, like that's... albums that I like that are probably more important in the history of music. No, definitely. There are, I could name albums I own that are more important albums, but. This is a this is where Schnee is very good, because I feel like Schnee, out of anyone I know, over in a good way, over romanticizes um, music. And well, he's passionate. 
Well, no, but he speaks to it in a way that's not schmaltzy. Okay, gotcha. And again, because Jellyfish wasn't big, no one no one knows what I know. And I'm okay with it. I'm not forcing anyone to listen to Jellyfish. Mm-hmm. I'm forcing people to listen to jazz music. So... <laughs> Yeah, but that's the whole reason I wanted to do this show, just to see if we could turn people on to them, because we all know how great it is, whether you can get it on vinyl or you can get the CD or something. It, it, literally, this is one of those bands that were so, I don't want to say they're lost, lost to time, because they are still producing reissues. But the, the the sign of a great artist or a band is that they are pulling everything out that they possibly can to reissue it. Which is something, you know? And And I think that means something. Here's the thing. This album, Belly Button, was released 34 years ago. And we're still talking about it. Rob Show Spilt Milk. Right. What? You want me to show Spilt Milk? Yeah. This was released 34 years ago. That album was released 31 years ago. They still sound fresh and contemporary. Yeah, they... they, they, Yes. Correct. I mean, you you could literally... You know, Rob can throw on the Frankenstein um, uh, spilt milk, throw it on it for somebody, and they're not going to know that that album is three decades old. No, because here's the deal. People are, bands are still playing that style of music. Pa- mm-hmm. Power poppy. I mean, I, I don't. Power pop adjacent. Pa- well, power pop are, adjacent, are there, yeah. Are there contemporary acts that you know of, Schnee, that are power pop that oh. I don't know? I oh, don't know. Anyone from the legal matters, there's there's tons of just great, great artists out there playing, but they're not as produced as this. Nobody, see. They were pumping money into the production of this band. They were supporting yeah. them with, they had some money to play with, yeah. especially on Spilt Milk. And they wasn't, from what I understood, that they weren't sure that they were ever going to be able to make another record after Spilt Milk. So they put, they concentrated on Spilt Milk to make it the best record they could. Yeah. That's what I understood. They did a hell of a job. I, and they did I a hell think of a people job. should walk away from this video uh, with a few things. In they mind. should just walk one. away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, with a few things in mind. Number one, Jellyfish, an incredible band. Still sounds fresh. Still inspires passion uh, in, in, in people like the three of us. Uh, or actually two of us in Rome. And musicians. Yeah, <laughs> and, and musicians. No. And Omnivore Records is an amazing label. You know, a lot of reissues and uh, Blue is incredible. Mm-hmm. And Danny Wilkerson's album, Wilkerson, is incredible. These mm-hmm. are things that people need to walk away from this. Jellyfish, Omnivore, Blue, Wilkerson, and um, maybe Grant Green. We no. we can throw Grant Green in there. What the hell? But <laughs> Jellyfish had a lot of influence, still influencing a lot of bands. Yeah. I mean, the main thing I want you to walk away with is that there's some really great stuff here. Give it a chance listen to it you know look at blue there's a lot of bands that are all jellyfish related you know yeah are the, all these the, packs and the puffy, licorice puffy ami yumi oh yeah. puffy oh, ami yumi roger manning solo albums great Jason yes. Peter solo albums licorice quartet the, the, go Andy. search for those andy Sturmer uh demos that are floating around the internet yeah there you go i mean we've been pretty loose in this discussion tonight but Hopefully you've enjoyed it. You've got something out of it. I guess we can wrap it up. I don't think we have much more to say. Well, I understand than... Rob's usually loose anyway. Hey, um, now that the ski lodge is condemned, where are you going to go to now? I don't know, but I got the shirt, and this gets me into clubs every night. <laughs> they go, hey, ski lodge. Does it, gonna... get it, does it get you into the E-Man the woman chicks dig it. with alfalfa and spiky? Oh, God. Oh boy. Sp- speaking of which, I do have a CD, Darla Hood. Uh, uh, of course. But this isn't do. stuff when she was a kid. This is stuff that she released like in 1960 and stuff like that, when she was into her 20s and 30s and stuff. Stuff from the late 50s and early 60s. How did he pull that out just randomly? <laughs> do you have that just sitting around? It was sitting there because it was a spare copy. I was going to put it up on Discogs. Well, wait, wait. I had no idea he had that. I was just being an idiot. I know. I have no idea either. Jesus. All right, Lever. Well, we've kept it loose. I hope you get turned on to some of these acts we talked about. Check out some jellyfish. Check check out some blue. Danny Wilkerson. Checklist. Checklist. Jellyfish, 
Omnivore, Omnivore Records, Blue, Wilkerson. Merry Makers are good. Get picked Darla, Hood. Darla Hood. All, all the Blue. L-E-O. Good, good, all the Blue tribute acts. I think they did. he did four different ones, right? Loud Lion, L-E-O. I don't know if there's, I don't know if and there's it, other uh, ones. No, there were like four. There were four, I think. But I'm old and feeble-minded. No. And then Ducky Carlson was on um, uh, the Amplifier Heads first album called Lauda. And I'm not a lot familiar of with that. that. Oh, yeah. Oh, Brent, come on. Amplifier What's it called Sal again? Baglio? The group is called the Amplifier Heads. The album's called Lauda. It's Sal Baglio from the Stompers. Oh, my gosh. Sounds like you're making all this stuff up. No, I'm not making this stuff. Lauda? Sal Baglio is your bookie, man, right? I haven't. I'm not aware of it. I I will check it out though. I have a stack of CDs here that you are not aware of that would blow your mind. Hmm. Well, I'm sure you have a lot. And a wall of CD, walls of CDs. I know. Yeah, he has a CD of doors opening and closing. It's fabulous. Just sound effects CDs, tons of yeah. them. Oh, you should check out my crackling fire uh, uh, section. Oh, I got crackling fire in Sweden, uh, crackling fire in uh, Colorado. Uh, crafting fire. Uh, yeah. He's not being funny. He actually has. He actually seat. has it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to torment you anymore with this onslaught of whatever it is. Check these bands out. We will. There's more on my channel. Please like, subscribe. Check out. Well, actually, both of these gentlemen. I'll put the links to both of these gentlemen. Actually, I think. Don't check out Rob. I think I got Rob listed down below anyway. I do. And your channel, Steve. Both of you are listed already. Check out both of these gentlemen's channels and uh, stay tuned for more nonsense in the warehouse. I'll just leave.